when you're in pain soothing as a springtime rain to have a friend right in your corner your heart will feel a little warmer tender loving Good evening, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond. Thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, for 35 years, believe it or not, we've been talking about this issue of tender loving care. I have some guests here who were hardly born 35 years ago, and that is my sisters. So, uh, thank you, Brad. Yeah, yeah. So, my Beth, thank you for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, and Ruthie, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and uh, we're all together this week as family once more, and it's, it's tremendous. Uh, we're doing memoir writing, and uh, that's something we want to talk about because... Um, I, I encourage people to do this, uh, and I, I've, in the past I've done this as part of my psychiatric practice. I say go back and look up your family history, understand uh, some of the principles and lessons learned from being part of a family. And uh, so we're doing that for ourselves. And uh, just to refresh you, because you'll see at the end of this show, as you see every week, uh, an advertisement for my father's book, uh, Stories of a West Virginia Doctor. And Dad taught us, by example, uh, as he finished his practice at age 75, practicing long after many people retire, but he loved medicine so much, uh, he said, uh, I've practiced medicine, and now it's time to write my memoirs. And he wrote out some 55 stories of his practice, and indeed, they have been well-received by our community. Uh, I think it's the third printing now, and fourth. Uh, fourth printing now. Okay, there you go. It's, they're selling like hotcakes. <laughs> fourth printing now. Yeah. And, and, and so Dad did the right thing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about memoir writing today. And Beth, you perhaps are the champion of the family for memoir writing. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know that I would call it champion. Okay. It's something I've always, always loved doing. And through the years, I've taken writing classes. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Kay, one of our other siblings, uh, for Christmas one year, gave me a week of memoir writing at Union Seminary in New York City. My goodness, And okay. that really set me on the course to, mm -hmm. to writing and wanting to share it with other people because mm -hmm. I felt it was so important that people get their family stories down, um, either to pass on for posterity. Mm -hmm. And it's not or just uh, rich and famous. I mean, oh, people, no. everyone can no. do this. Absolutely. Mm. Yes, okay. yes. Do you it know for a, your children. You know, if, uh, rich people or, or president of the United States, after he goes out of office, there'll be a book comes out about his practice or his, his uh, presidency. Uh, but, but the stories of life are important. Well, and do you know, I think they're every bit as interesting. Hmm, okay. I think that everybody has a story to tell. They have lots of stories yeah. to tell. Mm -hmm. And the secret is in helping them get those stories out. I think a lot of people hesitate about writing because they think they can't do it. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that they'll mess up the grammar, the editing, the sentence structure. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them my job is to help you get the stories out, mm -hmm. get them on paper. In right. fact, I, I use the example of uh, a woman who wrote a book called Writing Down the Bones, Natalie Goldberg. Okay. And she said one of the first rules is you forget spelling, you forget punctuation. Mm -hmm. In fact, you don't stay on the lines on the paper. Okay. Get the story down. So, so Ruthie, you know, we're, we're, we, when we sit down to write at the table, right. we're surrounded by English teachers, aren't we? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so this is good news, right? <laughs> this is very good. And, and we've been working on that some these last couple of days. Well, and us sisters have been together three other times mm -hmm. in this last year or so. Right, and I got and, together with you all last 
uh, March over a year ago. So That's this, right. So this is a process. And one thing that Beth does expertly is to ask us to, she'll give us a topic and then we'll just write on it. And again, then we go back and read it out loud and, and then do some editing, but mm -hmm. just the writing of it. Because I, tend, I found over these courses of writing that I tend to write a lot in uh, past tense. Mm -hmm. And those need change then. But when you're first getting it down, you don't even think about that. Right. You write just what's the topic that um, and you and you, you write us. wonderfully. We we try to affirm that when we <laughs> when we listen to your story, we say, "Wow, <laughs> Ruthie you. really has got the essence of this topic." What Thank what you. are some topics, by the way? What when we say write about stuff, what are we talking about? I mean, uh, you you've thrown out several topics for us. We've been writing over the past several days. Uh, well, Greenberg, here here's the perfect example okay. that I use in every writing class I teach, and, mm. and you know that I, I teach yeah, sometimes okay. private classes, mm -hmm. book clubs, red hat groups. I teach at the College for Older Adults through Virginia Tech um, down in Virginia mm -hmm. where I live, but I start every class with a piece of chocolate. Piece of all chocolate. Which is wonderful. That's okay, yes. right. And I've taken the class many times. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I use Nancy's chocolates from the Blue Ridge Mountains. Okay, and it's good chocolate. Absol Delicious. Chocolate. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, everybody eats that piece and then they just write what they feel, mm -hmm. what they experience. And nine times out of ten, I'm going to get some sort of memory about Grandpa and peppermint, or grandma and that Christmas memory, mm -hmm. or how dad only brought chocolate home on Saturday nights and split right. it up with the family. I was Some, remembering this time orange peel candy. That's homemade right. Homemade orange peel candy. That, that our grandmother made. Grandmother made, yeah. She never let anything go right. to waste. So, so the creative juices flow when the juices flow, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Get them started with okay. that. Yes. Now, by the way, uh, and this is... Uh, not just an advertisement about Beth. This is about memoir writing and, and it's serious business to do for your family and the sake of the grandchildren and the children and the future generations. But Beth, you mentioned you do these workshops. Give us an email address where if someone wants to pursue this with you and say, okay, Beth, tell me more. Absolutely. Uh, for information about me coming to help with a class or, or even other ways you can get started doing it, I'll just give you a simple email address, almond, like Greenbrier's, almond mm -hmm. like the nut, my last name, Ford, F-O-R-D, one word, almondford at gmail.com. Okay, real, real easy, almondford at gmail.com. Yes. Okay, we yes. may mention that again, just, okay. just in case someone's... Uh, yeah interested in what we're doing. Ruthie, you are a um, mother of two boys, yeah. and, and you, you actually have a budding writing, writer for a son. Actually, both of them. Both but of them. one okay. of them is pursuing it professionally. Right, as a um, master's degree at Iowa. Yes, a master of um, fine arts mm -hmm. in, in creative nonfiction. So mm. he's working on his thesis that he'll be um, needing to hand in. He's, he's midway through the mm -hmm. three-year program. And he's writing about um, his his life between when he lived in Poland as a younger youth and then in Florida. But he claims West Virginia. Here's where mm -hmm. he was born. And just um, he's just what do you call home? I think is kind oh, of his overall nice. theme. Okay. You know, or where is home, or mm -hmm. how home develops. That's kind wow. of some of what he's writing about. I hope I got that right. Mm -hmm. um, but but in the meantime, yeah, he writes and submits short stories. Uh -huh. Creative nonfiction, yeah. um, and and he's had several things published. Mm -hmm. In fact, so. he sent his old Aunt Beth a story okay. the other night. He he sends them to me occasionally Good. on email, and it was wonderful. It was he was doing a book review about a book called The Fire Tower or something like mm -hmm. that, but he wove it back with our father, his grandfather's memories of working on a fire tower, mm -hmm. which of course we know, Dad right. did that back to earn money for college during the Depression. Mm -hmm. And so Chris wove that into his book mm -hmm. review. So mm -hmm. this has been published, so right. it's really neat. You know, and you take these family stories and you can weave them into life situations. Now yeah. I've talked to college kids 
who or people who graduate from high school want to go to college and for some other reasons, whatever reasons, the funding isn't there. They just quite can't get it together, say, to go to the university mm -hmm. in three months. They just, they just can't do it for a year. But I, I go back to the fire tower story, and, I, right. and, and Dad could not go to school for several years, and he heard that there were the 100 greatest books ever published right. as a right. list. He got hold of that list, and he said, I'm going to read all 100 of these. Mm -hmm. And he did that while up in a fire tower in Vermont. That's right. And, and what, a, what an education yes. while waiting to get an education. Yes. And I, I, that's, I think that's helped several kids not get in a rut. You know, they, 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 they say, okay, I better do something while I'm waiting for my plans to work out. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Beth, tell, you started to tell us some of the themes of, of writing. I mean, how to get started, and, and, and uh, chocolate is a good thing. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's uh -huh. to warm up. That's a warm up. Yes, uh, yes. But, Memoir, what, what are some important topics as you do these workshops that you see people saying, oh boy, I'm glad we wrote about this? Oh, yes. Well, as in our case with the siblings mm -hmm. and, and our writings, we're pretty much sticking to our, our younger years. Okay, yeah. And that's always fun. Mm -hmm. What were your holidays like? What is in, what was an important part of mm -hmm. your life that doesn't even exist right. now? Our, our grandkids have never heard of things like carbon paper yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what, right. whatever you right. want it to be right. that can be fun what kind of games what was your allowance what did mm -hmm. things cost what was life did before you TV yeah, well that <laughs> what? I, we had, I don't what? know that no, we, we had, well we had some TV but it was like Saturday morning and you know we played a lot more I mean that's what I would want to say yes. in a story and what kind of games did you play yeah. did you take family vacations mm -hmm. what books did you read mm -hmm. The 4-H agent, Craig Priester, and I had a conversation on this show a while back, and uh, we began to talk about our family's supper table. Oh, yes. And, and we, we have had wonderful experiences with our parents gathering us mm -hmm. for supper every night. I mean, it was like a religious experience. You could not not go to have supper together as a family. And, and, and uh, same thing in the Priester family. And his father was a professor at Westland and did drama. So after supper, he had to rush off to the college to be involved with drama. But he wanted to have that time with his family. And I remember this, Craig saying this, and I'm sure he could write a memoir about this. Uh, he said, my dad never had to give me a lecture about how to grow up. What about life? I learned it all at the supper table. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, and yes. It's things, things like that. You can write those things down, and they'll mean a lot, won't they, for, for the family. And, of course, they may teach lessons to other people. Oh, absolutely. I think, in fact, a good, a good story, a good tale can be enjoyed by everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Ruthie, you, you uh, are a mother, and, and soon you're... Son Chris will be married. That's news. Right. Uh, you may be a grandmother. I mean, no, what, not for what, a while yet. what's the purpose of some of the ideas that you have about memoir writing? Um, well, I want them to understand who they are, mm -hmm. which yes. is, um, in fact, uh, our brother in law Tom was talking about that either last evening or this morning at the breakfast table. I can't okay. remember which. The last days have mm -hmm. been so full with writing. Um, <laughs> I've been but, working them hard. <laughs> yeah, she's a slave driver. <laughs> That's okay. We want to get this done. <laughs> but he and, and Beth, I think, were having a conversation, but Tom mainly, about who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you look back at your parents, grandparents, mm -hmm. great-grandparents even, and see characteristics or things that they did that indirectly or directly influenced you even if you mm -hmm. didn't know about it. Right. And so... To have dad's book for my children is priceless, mm -hmm. and I'm not a grandparent yet right. like you are, but to have the those things I'm writing down now or that the family's writing down to give Chris and Joseph, our, sure. our other son, a sense of, um, of family and, and some of it continuing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on, you know, in a way it gives them something to look up to, you mm -hmm. know, not... You know, sure. some of the values that our family has. Well, you know, my, my dad, our dad, uh, made house calls. And, and he wrote about that in his book. And, and as a doctor, I mean, I have to confess, I've made very few house calls. I mean, it's just not the way doctors practice medicine now. 
we should do more, but we're, we're, the insurance is in this and that, and we can't. And I have a daughter who will probably is a doctor who probably will never make house calls, but because Dad wrote down these stories, right. it's, there. it's there, and we understand yeah. the importance of that. Going into someone's home, caring for them in an environment that's safe and friendly, with family caring for family. You know, healthcare was not as expensive back then. People did get good care and they did get well, and and that comes out in say some of the topics dad picked actually some of that's happening with the whole hospice movement that's right you know i mean Death medical dying, people can, are going can, into yeah, homes right they, they come in under certain circumstance and that's a good thing yeah. maybe it'll come back around because of some memoir writings or some collective memory from the past yes how healing is accomplished yeah uh, beth uh, give us your uh email address again, and then talk about a workshop, a typical workshop that might take place for a day or two, like, like what we're doing over a three-day period. Okay. Uh, my email address is almondford at gmail.com. Almond like the nut, Ford like the car at gmail.com. My <clears throat> workshops pretty much vary. Mm -hmm. I've done you know two hour ones for red hat groups or okay. book clubs and that can be so much fun take take a book club one um, I will have them write on a favorite childhood book mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. book they read in high school that made an influence mm -hmm. on their life if they could only take one book on a desert island what would that book be? And I always have to discount the Bible. Not discount, that's the wrong word. Uh, I ask them not to use the Bible. Mm -hmm. say, I say along with the along Bible. With the Bible. Well, right. Because have... that is, uh, would be the sure. choice. Sure. And it's just been so much fun what people will come up with. I have a lot of men in my classes mm -hmm. also. It's usually about half and half. Um, might might choose some sort of mathematical book because they don't want to get bored. Or someone will choose... Uh, the complete works of mm -hmm. Shakespeare or whatever. The, right. What book would you take if well, you were going? You know, I had the privilege of having four sisters younger than me, <laughs> and I enjoyed the nursery rhymes. Oh, and, yes. and there's a lot of wisdom in those. Those yes. were, I think, I think some of those were created uh, for people to remember their, a story, maybe about the Great Plague. Rose, 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 ring around, around, around the rose. The rosy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and all fall down, and they used roses to get rid of the smell of the plague, and then they fell down and died. That's right. and, and so here's a children's poem that has a lot of meaning. But, but I got the privilege of listening to uh, year after year after year <laughs> the nursery rhymes. So I, I, I love them. <laughs> right. Oh, that's anyway, so, so I would write about that. See what you find out about someone yeah. with writing. It, well, it is true. I've I, I, I used this in psychotherapy sessions that everything you need to learn about life you can learn in kindergarten. And I mean, you don't have to be complex to learn some truth about life. And you know something that Flannery O'Connor said? Um, she said, if you have made it through childhood, Everybody has enough stories to last the rest of their mm -hmm. lives. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, 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 you know, Abraham Lincoln, and he's come back into vogue, and he's, uh, we're honoring him. I forget if this is 200 years of his birth or something. There's something happening uh, that's we, it's an important anniversary of sorts for Abraham Lincoln. Of course, he's always a great president. But he had a story to tell for almost every occasion of crisis in our country during the Civil War. And if you've seen the movie, mm, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, he brings out some of that, how he was a master storyteller. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we probably wouldn't have have this burning need to get write stories down if people told stories mm -hmm. more within mm -hmm. their families. Right. But we don't have Grandma in the rocking chair on Sunday afternoons. <clears throat> spinning her yarns, mm -hmm. her tales. Right. People don't tell stories mm -hmm. to each other anymore. So we've got to write right. them down. Yeah, one of the things, and you know some songs from Hard Camp songs and uh -huh. things like this. Uh, I ask kids uh, to, to uh, what is their current song they like and to sing me some. They don't know yeah, any songs. of the words really. Maybe the a few words, but not the not three verses or anything like that. But we know many songs, don't we? We did them. In fact, <laughs> in, our, in our writing today, it was interesting because we were talking about some West, some West Virginia experiences. And 
I think three of the five of us mentioned the same West Virginia song, two or three of the same mm -hmm. West Virginia songs. I want to songs. wake up in the morning yeah. where the yeah. rhododendrons yeah. grow. Yeah, yeah. yeah just Absolutely. We won't, we won't, won't sing, sing it. it. Trust <laughs> me, we won't sing it. You, you've got the wrong almonds for that one. <laughs> I wanted to say something more about Beth's sure. workshops because I've been on the other end of it of setting them up for her to come down and do them. And they're wonderful and they're a lot of work when you're writing them. Mm -hmm. And they're a little bit of work to set them up, but they're very well worth it. I did, she, Beth came down in August, I think it was, and to Florida, to Orlando, and through my church mainly, and some through people with my husband's work. My husband happens to be a copy editor, so again, involved with <laughs> some writing. writing Talk things. about pressure for oh, the boy. teacher. <laughs> huh? um, but I got him and my son and other some other group of people to get together to, to do best writing workshops. But I did two of them. Um, one was a day workshop from about six hours during the day, something like nine, nine to, to three. three. Mm -hmm. And then we did two evenings. So for people who worked all in normal work hours, day work hours, they could still do it. So six to nine for um, two different evenings. And that was really That's a good fun. way. So you can practice, or you could do a Saturday, or I think Beth's, um, some, of, some of your teaching is with this, um, College, uh, uh, adult college, you do it once a week for an hour College or for older adults, which is through the Reynolds Homestead part of Virginia Tech, we meet every Thursday for two hours for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So mm -hmm. so they even get a little more writing than, than the workshops that I set up. Right. But, Here, um, I'll bring it good. even closer mm -hmm. to home. Mm -hmm. uh, the class of 1966. Right. Buckhead, i sure high school class, my class, out of school now over 45 years, uh, have decided it's time to write our memoirs. And, and we have over 100 classmates who live in this area, and some, of course, have moved out. And are, uh, but they, we came, some came together for a writing workshop that you conducted at our last reunion. That was fun. It was fun. It was a Saturday morning, and I think you did another workshop maybe on a Thursday night or something before the reunion got underway. And, and we just tried to uh, weave it in there so that... Uh, folks could be encouraged to write their stories. Stories uh, about Stardust Driving, uh, yeah. for you Buchanan people. Oh yeah, yeah. well, the, 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 our class, and this is, I think, is an important topic, uh, had a, uh, we came out of one room and two room schoolhouses out in the county, mm -hmm. Selbyville, Indian Camp, uh, all sorts of places, Excelsior, places that don't exist anymore. That's right. Those stories are important. Uh, we had other events, uh, that, that, that we're going to be writing about that, that are historic. I mean, the era that we were in school, the, 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 the Vietnam War and so forth. Those are important stories. And so this is just more fuel for the fire. Right. Fire to write. Right. And I don't want to totally make light of writing the memoirs. Uh, I always keep a box of tissues mm, on the table yeah. because oftentimes what we're writing brings up some very mm -hmm. powerful emotions. I had a tender moment today. You had a tender moment. I wasn't yeah. going to tell on you. Know? <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> in fact, I always say what takes place in my writing workshops, mm -hmm. it's like Vegas. Mm -hmm. It stays sure, within, sure. and everybody promises right. that because right. we do share with each other. Mm -hmm. And it's the sharing of our writing that helps everyone mm -hmm. else with their next, Writing. writing, yeah, it, it's amazing how it works. Mm -hmm. Now and you know if you heard an English teacher telling you this, you would be running the other way. But but we're normal people, <laughs> <laughs> and we're saying this is a fine exercise to do for a family, or for a class, for a part of a church exercise. Various ways this can be done. Someone might be sitting there saying, "Gosh, I don't have a workshop available, but I'd love mm -hmm. to write some stories." I mean, just buying, there's hundreds of journal books out there yeah. that are mm -hmm. lovely, or even just a, dad used to write on um, legal paper, but, you know, get a journal and just mm -hmm. think of a topic or two that you want to write yourself. Again, you're not writing a diary, you're, you're picking a topic and mm -hmm. writing about it. Yeah. And Beth mentioned some great topics. Blog is another tonight. term that's tossed out at oh, young people will oh. talk about now, and I've gone on some blogs. And I have a blog. You have a blog, okay. I have a blog. Yeah, I've, yes. I think I've read a couple of your stories yes. on the blog. and. It's another way to sort of do what we're talking about, isn't mm -hmm, it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. <laughs> 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 and speaking of that, 
that. People talk about their hunting stories okay. and their pet hiking, a walk remembered. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Well, you know, this I, I'm so glad and you can tell, I hope you can tell the feeling to have my sisters <laughs> here. Uh, and uh, Bethy's happy on the Blue Ridge and uh, Ruthie's happy in Orlando and and of course Kay is here in Buchanan, Annie's down in North Carolina, but we're all together. Uh, and we're doing memoir writing. And so if you uh, need any encouragement uh, or you want to ask a question, uh, you have best permission, almondford at gmail.com. Please. And of course, as we go off the air here in a minute, you'll see Dad's book, Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, as an example of what he did. And then also, then I followed up with uh, another book, additional more stories of a West Virginia doctor, 77 stories that he told while on this TV program over the years, but he didn't write down. And then, after my grandchildren were born, <laughs> I just felt a need to tell some more stories, particularly of my youth, and that came out this fall and has also been well received. And uh, it's more stories of, of a West Virginia doctor's son. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot to uh, share. Uh, thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. As always, a special thanks for Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week. And look forward, next week we're going to have some Cub Scouts on. They're going to be talking about their God and Me project, the importance of Cubs, Cub Scouts. And I, I want to just salute the parents who have their children involved in Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts and 4-H and, and, and church groups, all these organizations. Children are being nurtured in our community to grow up morally straight, uh, to grow up uh, to be uh, the citizens that we all want them to be. And you'll meet some of those next week. So we look forward to seeing you at that time. Have a great week. Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia. And Tender Loving Care, Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman, using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buchanan for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.